Hello viewers, welcome back to my channel. In this session, I shall be explaining an example on FCFS scheduling algorithm. Though in the previous session also I have explained this, here I wanted to show you the Conway effect. So in the previous session, we have seen that there is a disadvantage in the FCFS scheduling and that disadvantage is called by the name Conway effect. So how exactly Conway effect can be seen here. So for that reason, I have taken here two different situations just to show you how this Conway effect can be observed. Look here, what I have done is in these two examples. So let me just tell you uh, first about the question. There are two different situations here. In the first situation, you can see three different processes with the different arrival and burst time that will be definitely given all the times. So and moreover, there is an another situation with three processes given with arrival time and burst time. You are asked to find out here the average waiting time in these two situations. So let us see now. First, we'll try to solve the first situation and then we'll come to the second problem. So in the first situation, so these things I will not repeat again. You know now how to calculate all these different times. Completion time for to carry out the completion time. So for this particular thing, I'll just make the bar uh, Gantt chart. Okay, I'll write it here. This is for the first situation I'm writing here. So I'll start this with zero. So at this time, definitely there is a process in the queue. So we'll take that process. This process has taken how much time? So let me just show with a quite bigger space just proportionally to show the burst time here. It has ended at 24. And next see the arrival time is one at these two. At this point of time, the two processes are already there in the queue. That means at time one, P2 is also there in the queue and P3 is also there in the queue. So what is that you have to do? In case of a tie, process with smaller ID is executed first. This is what I told you. So here there is a tie. So process with smaller ID will be taken. So P2 will get its chance first and it has to, it needs only three units. So it will complete its job at 27. Next P3 will be the process that gets scheduled. It requires three units. So it will complete its job. So this is what. Now quickly fill the values. P1 has completed at 24. P2 has completed at 27. P3 has completed at 30. Okay. And then you calculate the turnaround time. Turnaround time is how much? Completion time minus arrival time. 24 minus 0, 24. 27 minus 1, 26. 30 minus 1, 29. Next, waiting time. Just see waiting time. Turnaround time minus of burst time. 24 minus 24, 0. 26 minus 3, how much? 23. 29 minus 3 is how much? Uh, 26. So this is what you got the waiting time. Now add these numbers 23 plus 0 plus 23 and 26 because you are asked here to find out the average waiting time in both these examples. So you have completed the first one. Now add these values how much it will be 9 49. 49 is the total. So let me just write it in red ink here the numbers. So this is what not to get confused with the previous. So this value you got here 49. Now find out the average waiting time. So you know the formula. Oh, <coughs> it's not formula very simple. The total value is what 49 divided by the total number of processes 3. So 49 divided by 3 is how much 16.3 milliseconds. You got the average waiting time as 16.3. Quickly you complete now the second example. Second example let us, so I am just maintaining the same column headings, but you have to write down separately in the exam. So 24, what is that you have to do? Now completion time, but before filling the values for the completion time, for the second situation also, you are supposed to what? Show it in the Gantt chart, the complete schedule. Now let us start from the 0th. See, look here, the arrival time for process P1 is 1, but your this one will definitely start from 0. So P1 you cannot schedule. There are next P2, yes, at 0, P2 is there, at 0, P3 is also there. So you take what the process with a smaller ID. Smaller ID here is what P2. So you will first schedule P2. P2 requires how much of burst time? Only 3. Next, you have to schedule P3. Because P3 is the one which has arrived at 0. Then next P3 will be completing. So it will take how much? 3 plus 3, 6. Fine. Next P1. P1 will get its chance at 6th millisecond and P1 requires 24. So it will complete its job at 30. 
So this is the Gantt chart for the second situation. Now fill the values, completion time, P1 is completing, P1 is completing at 30, P2 is completing at 3, P3 is completing at 6. Turn around time, completion time minus of arrival time, 30 minus 1, 29, 3 minus 0, 3, 6 minus 0, 6. You got the turnaround. Waiting time, turnaround time minus of burst time. Turnaround time is here. So, 29 minus 24, 5. 3 minus 3, 0. 6 minus 3, 3. How much you got? 5 plus 0 plus 3, 8. So, let me use the red ink here. Okay, this is your answer. Now, for that you calculate the average waiting time. Average waiting time will be how much? 8 divided by because there are 3 processes. It will, you will get an answer how much? 2.6 millisecond. So, I am just writing here and also what I will do is I will make this in a box the final answer. Now, you can arrive at the conclusion. Look at the first situation you got the average waiting time as how much? 16.3 uh, millisecond. And here in the second situation you got a very less and uh, time and it is 2.6 millisecond. So this is what we wanted the goal for any scheduling algorithm should be what minimum waiting time, minimum response time, minimum turnaround time. So we have observed here that the first situation has illustrated the convey effect. Why? Because the processes with higher burst time if they arrive first then they are making the other processes to wait for a long time. Look here, you can very clearly see process P1 has not waited at all, it got the CPU first, but its burst time was more. Whereas P2 and P3, just look, observe here, P2 has waited for 23 units, whereas P2 has, uh, P3 has waited for 26 units. Though their burst time was very, very small, but still they have to wait. So, this is called as Conway effect. And just to show that, suppose if we had done in a reverse manner. So, that is the reason in the second situation I slightly I change the arrival time. So, once I change the arrival time what has happened is P2 got scheduled first okay which has got how much only 3 units of burst time then P3 got scheduled then P1 the process with a uh, larger burst time got scheduled at the end because of what I changed the arrival times here and you can see what the waiting time also in each of these processes final waiting time is 8 units whereas the average waiting time is how much only 2.66 see the difference 16.3 here and 2.6 here hope this session is useful to you all thank you bye bye take care